Matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Welcome to our Wednesday evening in the Word. We thank you, FBC Church family, for meeting us right here as we dine on the divine. And all of our friends and family, we thank you once again for meeting us here as we unpack the Word of the Lord. The Lord has something to say directly to you, directly to your situation, speaking into your destiny. For you are called, you are chosen for such a time as as this. Please tag and share tonight's lesson as we again have our conclusion of the matter. Yes, this will be our last point of our series in trial to triumph, in it to win it. This is part four of a four-part four series. We are in it to win it. I pray that you have been encouraged, enriched, looking forward to what the Lord is doing in your lives, that God is reminding us that he is faithful, that he is able to do exactly what he said. He did not bring you this far to leave you. He did not. He's going to bring you all the way to your destiny. So let's get right to it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are excited and we are elated for what you are doing for us in this season. We thank you, oh God, for your word. We bless you, oh God, for your word makes us empowered and your word makes us impactful and your word continues to move mountains in our lives. So God, we thank you that your word is spiritually mature maturing us that God we are walking and doing great things in you because of your word so tonight God as we have our Wednesday evening in the word and you have given us this great topic of discussion during our discourse tonight Holy Spirit blow a fresh wind on us encourage us like never before show us your glory show us your will and your way through your word now God I ask you to use me for your glory. Holy Spirit, have your way for you are our divine teacher and God, you orchestrate our destiny. So God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Our Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let the church of the living God say amen. Amen. Once again, this is our part four in our four-part series, Trial to Triumph. In it to win it, the Lord has certainly been encouraging us I pray that you had moments of reflection, knowing that God's going to do just what he said. It does not matter what the circumstances are that surround you. God is still who he is, and he's going to move on your behalf, and he's going to manifest all of his promises just for you. So tonight we want to start with James chapter 1 verses 5 through 8. We want to unpack the word wisdom. We all need wisdom. We have a question though on the table as we sit in this tension that how do we receive wisdom from God? Well the Bible says again in James chapter 1 5 verses 5 through 8, if any of us lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. Hmm. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Whew, that's something to unpack tonight. So if we lack wisdom, it is clear that we lack wisdom, right? True wisdom comes from the Lord. We have knowledge. We have information. But wisdom comes from God. And trials bring a necessary season to seek wisdom from God. We often don't know when we need wisdom until the time is difficult. When we go through times of difficulty, then we understand that wisdom is something that's necessary. Once we're in the time of trial, we need to know if a particular trial is something God wants us to do, to walk in, to increase our faith, and to allow us to persevere in faith. But this requires wisdom. So in trial, we need wisdom. And as I said on the onset, wisdom is a lot more than knowledge. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters, is just raw information. If you read a sentence, that is knowledge, right? You have unpacked something that was written and given to you to read. Just raw information. 
But wisdom shows us how to use that information. Hmm. Knowledge is raw information, but wisdom shows us how to use it. So someone once said, and I heard, that knowledge is the ability to take things apart, but wisdom is the ability to put things together. So we cannot work the word without wisdom. I'm going to say that again, that we cannot work the word without wisdom. So because we need wisdom, he told us to let us ask of God, and we receive it just simply by asking him. God, I need wisdom. I have raw information. I have knowledge, but I don't know how to use it according to your will and your word. We must tag the text as it connects with our life and our lifestyle. It is important for us, and I want us to catch this tonight, that wisdom allows us to use information according to God's word and will. Mm -hmm. So wisdom, God's word, and his will are all attached to him. So he wants us to be clear that we don't have wisdom and we need to ask for it. <laughs> so he said, if you ask for it, I'll give it to you very generously liberally, without despising our request. So he tells us that we read books, we have conversations with friends, we understand that renowned experts share knowledge, we go to different ceremonies, but sometimes we don't seek God. So God is telling us in this proper context, that books are necessary for knowledge. Counsel, the Bible says, is necessary because counsel provides wisdom, he says, right? There is wisdom in a multitude of counsel. But if we don't pair the books in the council with the counsel of God, we will operate outside of his will and his word. So we are clear that we must ask God for wisdom in order, catch this, to receive the fullness of his blessings. He reminds us, that he wants to provide wisdom to us, but we must communicate with him. We must be very consistent with his word. This language here of asking God anything implies, and we talked about this on a number of occasions several weeks prior to this, it implies humility. <laughs> that you are humble in asking God because you understand that his ways aren't our ways. That his thoughts are our thoughts. And he sees the full picture. He sees from all sides and angles. That's why we must ask of God. Even the smallest thing. He says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you. So we want to ask God for wisdom. And he will always engage with us with an open hand and never with a clenched fist. So when we want wisdom, I believe there's a question that we need to ask of the text. Well, how do I start? Right? How do I start? I'm asking God for wisdom. Do I just say, God, I want wisdom in this area? Absolutely. That's a form of conversing with God. But we will begin with the word of God. We begin obtaining wisdom with the Bible. True wisdom, catch this, is always consistent with God's word. So if we want wisdom, we ask of him, and how do we begin? Through the Bible. <laughs> it begins and it ends with the Bible because true wisdom is always consistent with God's word. 
So we must be clear today that we ask God for wisdom. He gives it to us liberally and generally and generously. And we're very humble in asking him, and he will give it to us. But he said, ask in faith. Why did James tell us to ask in faith? Because our request for wisdom must be made like any other request that is with faith, without in faith, without doubting God's ability or desire to give us wisdom. When we ask of God, we cannot doubt God. We must trust him because he's our father and he is faithful to perform his word. Don't you know that God wants you to succeed? <laughs> that God wants you to walk in full victory? That God wants you to see the full manifestation of his promises? We have an entire host of cheerleaders according to Hebrews, in the heavens, pushing us and cheering us on. We have our Savior, Jesus Christ, interceding for us that we won't give up the fight. So he wants us to win. So we cannot doubt when we ask, but we must ask in faith. So anyone who doubts or lacks faith should not expect to receive. Because remember, he said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So in faith, we please God, and in faith, we receive, right? So if we go to a loved one, and the loved one has what we need, and we understand the loved one is just smitten over us, and they love us, and they want us to succeed, and they want us to have everything that we need to be prosperous and, and to walk in the fullness of what God calls us to do, and we ask for something. By faith, we receive it. Why? Because by faith we asked. And we understand that they will give us what we ask for. Why? Because they want us to win. We're in it to win it. So here we cannot doubt God because if we doubt God, it shows that we don't trust him. And if we have a lack of, of faith and trust in God, catch this, it also shows that we don't have a foundation and we'll be unstable in all of our ways. Have we ever found ourselves, as the Bible says, like a wave uh, of the sea driven and tossed by the wind, that at times we don't trust God, we, our mind is foggy, right? We make decisions out of our emotions because we're not sure. Well, God, this looks right. No, it's not about what you see. It's about what God said. That's why we have to, it begins and ends with the Bible. Because we have to know what God said in order to see what God is sending us to. Mm, that's good. So we have to remind ourselves that we're asking God by faith. We cannot be tossed by the wind. We cannot be persuaded by our situation. We cannot be in a continual state of agitation driven by the wind tossed back and forth. If we're going to trust God, we must trust God in everything that we do. We must trust God in every area of our lives. See, when a wave of the sea is tossed, it is a picture of someone who is hindered by unbelief and unnecessary doubts. When a wave is at sea, it is without rest because it's doubting. When we doubt God, we don't find rest. <laughs> when we trust God, we rest. We find peace in the midst of the storm. We have a story, of course, the Bible reminds us when he was having a conversation, Jesus Christ with his disciples, and they were in a storm. And Jesus Christ, he was asleep. Because he already knew that the boat would make it to the other side. So he did what? He rested because he was at peace knowing that he was going to make it to the other side. But the disciples had an issue. They said, oh, what are we going to do, master? We're not going to make it. He said, how long have I been with you? <laughs> how long have we been in relationship? How long have you seen my works and you don't trust me now? He spoke to the storm and said, peace be still, and went back to sleep. You need to speak to your storms. 
and say, peace be still. Why? Because my Savior will bring us over safely. So the Lord is reminding us at this moment that as we, the sons and daughters of God, we cannot be double-minded in our ways because if we're double-minded, we're unstable. If we believe God one day and then the next day we don't, and then two days later we believe, and then Sunday morning we believe, and then Saturday night we don't, right? Wednesday we believe, but then th Thursday we don't. That's tossing. We're back and forth. We're back and forth. But God told us to be stable in our trust in our Savior. Because if we're double-minded, we're not able to operate in destiny. Be secure in your Savior. Be secure in what he said. Because God said what he meant, and he meant what he said. That's why the book of the Bible is the truth. Because the Bible says in John chapter number 1 that the word is God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So it's one and the same. Jesus and his word, it, they coexist. And they will never fail us. So being double-minded, again, is operating from two different mindsets or two souls. That one, you're operating in your earthly or your worldly system. And then the other, you're operating in your spiritual or your heavenly system. There are two systems who are clashing. If you operate in your soulless realm where you house your experiences, you house your disappointments, you house areas of frustration, you house anger, you house everything you've gone through, you house that in your soul, your flesh is coupled with that, and you are tossed back and forth because you question God based on your experiences, right? But God is saying you can trust me because if you trace your experiences, you'll see that I brought you out every time. So we can't be tossed with two souls, the spirit and then our natural, <laughs> our spirit and then our natural, back and forth, it's like a pendulum, back and forth. But Jesus Christ is telling us here in James chapter number one that we have to be reminded that we must operate in the spirit and be secure in our Savior. So we have to ask ourselves these questions in times of peril and challenge. Do you believe that God will give you wisdom? Specify your wants to God. State your exact condition. I'm going to give you a little homework tonight. Specify your wants. State your exact condition. Lay the whole case before God with as much order that you can by telling him your heart. He's your savior and he's also your friend. He's willing to hear and prepare to help. So that's your homework to have that conversation with God, to specify your wants, state your condition, your exact condition, lay the whole case before God with as much order as you can, telling your story to your Savior, for he is your intelligent friend. He's willing to hear it, and he's willing to help. All you have to do is believe. So here tonight, we're going to close with James chapter number 1, verses 9 through 11. It encourages us through trials and tribulations. It's encouragement for us who have been affected by trials. The Bible says, let the lowly brother glory in exhortation, but the rich in being humble. Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with their burning heat than it withers the grass and flowers fall and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fail, fail away and fade away with its pursuits. So God is telling us to be lowly, to rejoice when we are lifted up in God. It's always appropriate to operate in humility. We ask ourselves serious questions. When a person is economically poor, 
their position in Christ is still high. When a person is physically poor, he is still spiritually rich. People who are poor in this world should not focus on the lack of material things, but rather focus on their abundant spiritual blessings. A rich person needs to always realize they can end up like a poor person because riches fade away. But life itself, connected to our riches in the spirit, it is full of of blessings forevermore. So here the Lord wants to encourage us in this moment that these trials, they come to remind us that when we are humble before the Lord, that he will exalt us in due time, that riches fade away, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. So I want to encourage you tonight as we close this session that the blessings of the Lord will endure even through hardship. That we are blessed in the face of opposition. We are blessed in the face of peril. Because the Bible says that we are motivated by love. There is no greater power than love. The Bible says Jesus is the greatest power and we shall not be defeated. So I want to encourage someone today. I pray that you were encouraged and blessed by the four weeks of our sessions, imparting the word of the Lord concerning from trial to triumph, in it to win it, that your position in Christ is always great. Your position in Christ is always grand. And in spite of what you're going through, God said you will have the victory, that the enemy is defeated and God is exalted. Your blessing is on the way. So I need you to take time today to take a moment and bless Jesus because we're moving from trial to triumph, because we're in it to win it, that we will be doers of the word and not hearers only, that we will walk by faith and not by sight that we will walk in the perfect law of liberty, which is a wonderful way to describe the word of the Lord, for it is powerful and it is rich, and it will continue to move us from trouble to triumph in this world. So I pray that you are encouraged. I pray, pray that you are impacted. I pray that you are moving forward in what the Lord has called you to do. Remember, you have some homework, so I want you to have those honest conversations with God and share your heart intimately with him. Him. Please take some moments to go back and review our prior lessons concerning communion with God. God wants you to commune with you. He wants to talk to you about every situation. He wants to talk to you concerning your trial because he's moving you from trial to triumph. We're in it to win it. God bless you tonight. I pray that you are encouraged. I pray the Lord is continuing to keep you because he's the one who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. He is the only wise God with dominion and power now and forever Amen. God bless you. We thank you for meeting us tonight again for our Wednesday evening in the word. I pray that you will continue to move forward in what the Lord has called you to do. Walk out your victory for victory belongs to you. We'll see you this time next week as we celebrate our Wednesday evening with the word. And I would love to see you right here on Sunday morning, every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. to celebrate Jesus Christ with us here at Friendship Missionary Baptist church in the great town of Hamden in the great state of Connecticut meet me right here at 11 a.m. and let's rejoice in God together. God bless you and I'll see you next week.